people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to another very exciting FNAF news video. Help Wanted 2 just got a crazy new teaser and a description revealing more info about the game. The FNAF movie just crossed 300 million dollars at the worldwide box office. We've also got some major upcoming merch releases from U2s and even Funko, so if you guys are excited for all this FNAF movie news, buckle up. And also scroll down, squeeze that subscribe button until it pops like a birthday balloon. And I've also just realized the fruit punch I had earlier makes it look like I'm wearing lipstick, so I guess we're going with that for the whole video. And of course, it wouldn't be a FNAF news video unless we started off with some brand new merchandise from Hot Topic. And this is our first product to take a look at, an absolutely terrifying Freddy Fazbear plushie, who also doubles as a backpack. Folks, do not count this plushie out just yet. Looks like they forgot to color his snout, so Freddy looks a bit off, but yet again, another Freddy Fazbear-themed backpack plushie. Hot Topic also has four brand new shirts, the first one featuring the daycare attendant, the other one featuring the Freddy Fazbear's pizza logo with with Toy Freddy, the original FNAF 1 gang on a t-shirt, as well as some art of Funtime Freddy. Moving on from Hot Topic to FYE, they released a brand new drink, though this time it's not a fizzy faz, instead it's an energy drink. Themed around Security Breach, as you can see the art is kind of lackluster, it's just the, you know, the poster for Security Breach. It also has a cherry lime flavor, which I'm not sure how well that tastes for an energy drink, but there you go, a brand new drink from FYE. Taking a break from merchandise, let's talk about some book news because we actually have a lot of book news to talk about. First up, Fazbear Fright's Graphic Novel Collection Volume 5 is coming out on September the 3rd of next year. It's going to feature the stories Jump for Tickets, Sea Bonnies, which is going to be interesting, and Find Player 2. We also had a listing for a Tales from the Pizzaplex box set. That's going to be coming out on November the 12th of 2024. And of course, we'll be featuring all the Tales books, so book 1 from book 8. So it does seem like the listing we got for the ninth Tales book was actually a mistake. There is not going to be a ninth Tales book. And then we also got the cover for the Security Breach Files Updated Edition. This comprehensive breakdown covering gameplay, secrets, easter eggs, and alternate endings for both the main game and DLC will deepen the knowledge of even the most enthusiastic player. On the cover, we've got a hologram of Roxanne Wolf, the Eclipse from the Ruin DLC. We have the poster that Freddy gave to Bonnie that we can see in his green room. And then interestingly enough, we have the early concept art for the first Ruin teaser we got with Cassie. Scott actually making a comment saying for those who have noticed, it's my fault that the old concept art for Cassie was used instead of the final piece. It will be replaced in the finished product. So on April the 2nd of next year is when we get the Security Breach Files updated edition. That's going to be interesting because these Security Breach Files... They're not known for being super reliable, so I'm very curious to see how much they change in this updated edition. Moving on now to Hex, they finally released their Shadow Bonnie glow-in-the-dark hoodie. Despite previous reports, a Shadow Bonnie plushie was not released alongside this hoodie. Maybe that's gonna still happen in the future, I don't know. But either way, the hoodie looks absolutely insane. It glows so, so well in the dark. And speaking of Hex, we've got an updated roadmap for their upcoming plushies. First up, the Mangle will be releasing this month, it seems like. The next wave of plushies including Springtrap, Withered Chica, and Withered Golden Freddy has been delayed. As Springtrap and Golden Freddy are receiving some design changes, and it seems like now they're going to be releasing in January. Moving on now to U2s, their Ruin Wave of Figures and Plushies are now available, featuring Monty, Roxanne, Eclipse, the Mimic, and the Mexus Entity. And for Plushies, we've got Glamrock, Bonnie, AR, Roxanne, the Eclipse, and Helpy. Daco's brand new figure, Puppet Daco, is also available, and released alongside this wave was a print featuring the Withered to animatronics from FNAF 2, though unfortunately, that's already sold out. In fact, it sold out in four minutes. It was limited to 125 copies, so no surprise there it sold out in time. I got mine. Did you get yours? We also got an update on U2's upcoming Anim Dude figure from FNAF World. When responding to updates on the figure, Austin from U2 said that it's probably going to release next year. It's already, but just didn't fit in with the rest of the Ruin Wave, which makes a whole lot of sense. Though a figure is not the only piece of Anim Dude merchandise we're getting from YouTube's because they also showed off a plushie of Anim Dude. And this just looks absolutely fantastic. It's segmented exactly like Scott's avatar in FNAF World. And also in that video, we got an updated look at the Sitting Pop Goes plushie, featuring the brand new chibi kind of styled eyes. Sitting Pop Goes, Sitting Candy, Long Pop Goes, Long Candy, Chibi Ignited Foxy, and Sitting Ignited Freddy are all releasing presumably this month. And speaking of fanverse YouTube's merchandise, we had King Carter confirming that a third pop Pop Goes pin set is on the way, and it looks like the theme for the 
third pin set is going to be Beach. And lastly, for YouTube's news, we got the full reveal of one of their FNAF movie figures. And I know what you're all thinking. Oh, I can't wait. Maybe it's going to be the Yellow Rabbit or, or Mike or, or maybe Sparky because he's canon now. No, no, no. You silly, silly viewer, you. It's going to be the goat, the man, the myth, the legend, dare I say, Doug, the lawyer. We had Michael P. Sullivan over on his official TikTok account reveal the concept art for the upcoming figure. And personally, I think it looks almost spot on. The head and the hair, I feel like could be a bit more accurate. But the fact that we're going to be getting an official figurine of Doug, the lawyer, the best FNAF movie character, is absolutely insane. Uh, in all seriousness, though, I do hope they do a proper FNAF movie wave because... Like I just listed off, there's a whole bunch of fan favorite characters that I'm sure people would die to have. But lastly, for merchandise, let's talk about Funko. We don't have a whole lot of Funko news, but what we do have, it's pretty big. Because we had Scarlet Joker over on Twitter announce that the Freddy and Bonnie Funko statue is still coming. It's still on the way. And in fact, not only are we getting that Freddy and Bonnie statue, we're also going to be getting a Golden Freddy statue. Hell yeah! Scarlet Joker later clarified, quick note, I'm not sure which Golden Freddy it is in reference to FNAF 1 Golden Freddy or Withered Golden Freddy from FNAF 2, but his ass will be sitting down. Funko, you cannot mess this up. This is kind of the statue that a lot of people have been asking for besides Springtrap. I'm sure Golden Freddy has been like one of the most requested. So I'm very excited to hear that Funko FNAF statues are still on the way and we're getting such cool ones like Golden Freddy. And now let's take a quick pit stop at the Fazbear Fanverse to take another look at the Jewel of Creation Ignited Collection. Because we had Nixon over on Twitter reveal the official jump scare for Ignited Foxy and wow, does this look crazy. Not only are these effects built into the game, this is not like Photoshop, this isn't After Effects, like that will happen in the game. Foxy himself looks absolutely terrifying. He stabs us in the face with his hook. We also had Coco's Beans, the animator for this jump scare show off, the behind the scenes of it. I wanted to show it off here because you get a better look at the full model for Ignited Foxy and my God, he just looks so cool. Nixon also put out another teaser of Ignited Foxy. It looks like in the office level once again. Well, this is the more demonic version of Ignited Foxy. Right now, the working title is the inner version of Foxy, like the inner demons. And man, I thought Foxy couldn't get any more terrifying, any more badass. Like, he just looks absolutely so, so awesome here. And now let's move over to the FNAF movie, because like I said at the start of the video, the movie just crossed $300 million at the worldwide box office. It's the highest grossing film of 2023. It's Blumhouse's highest grossing film of all time. The achievements that this film is setting, they're going off the charts. This is insane. And again, keep in mind the budget was only about like $25 million and they already made that back just by selling the streaming rights. So having 300 million so far at the worldwide box office, again, that's massive. That's so much money to put into the sequel to make it better. If you missed it, the film also released on digital not too long ago. It's available right now on YouTube, Movies and TV, Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV, Vudu Fandango, Microsoft Movies and TV, Xfinity Stream, as well as Verizon TV. And it looks like, depending on where you purchase it, there are three bonus featurettes that you can take a look at. FNAF from Game Game to Big Screen, Killer Animatronics, and Five Nights in Three Dimensions. I've watched these, they're absolutely fantastic, especially if you're a big fan of behind the scenes on films. It's got how they made the actual animatronics, how they constructed Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, interviews from the cast and the crew, different shots of them filming the movie, it, it's just so cool, trust me. The movie comes out on physical on December the 12th on 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray, DVD, and there's also a 4K Ultra HD steelbook in the works. This is what it looks like. In my opinion, I think it looks perfect. On the front, you've got the classic animatronics. On the back, you got Freddy. And opening up the case inside, you've got all five of the animatronics, including the cupcake, can't forget about him, inside of the ball pit. All right, well, now let's move on to the final topic for today's FNAF news video, and that is, of course, Help Wanted 2 and Steel Wool Studios. First up, we got Steel Wool Studios back when it was Thanksgiving, posting a Thanksgiving art piece featuring the gang of Freddy and Friends, including Helpy, who's down at the bottom right. He's not in the Freddy and Friends short, so I don't know if this is teasing something. I don't know if they just threw him in because they thought he looked cool. I mean, Helpy is pretty awesome. But now let's talk about this poster. As you can see, this is replicating the Help Wanted 1 key art with all the animatronics kind of mashed together, though this time they're connected by wires, which is interesting. We got Funtime Freddy, Glamrock Chica, Roxy, the daycare attendant, Circus Baby, the moon, the staff bot, as well as Ballora. Interesting that there's no FNAF 6 representation because we know Scrap Baby's in the game, but I'd love to know what are your thoughts on the key art for FNAF Help Wanted 2 and now let's move on to a new description for the game. This description is, of course, by Ray 
Ray McCaffrey. It was featured in a brand new PlayStation blog posted today. It says FNAF Hub Wanted 2 is the latest installment in the iconic horror franchise, immersing players like never before through the astounding capabilities of the PlayStation VR 2. Help Wanted 2 drops the player into dozens of insane, terrifying jobs offered by Fazbear Entertainment in order to discover what part of the Fazbear family suits them best. Whether it's preparing food for guests, glamming up the animatronic stars, fixing technical issues with attractions, performing first aid in emergency situations, or manning the DJ booth, there's a long-term career path for all who are interested. The core of the game is designed to be replayable through randomized dynamic challenges. Keep up or face termination. So actually in that description, we got a bit of lore for Help Wanted 2. If you remember back in the first Help Wanted game back in 2019, we were a beta tester for a VR title developed by Fazbear Entertainment, but for Help Wanted 2, this is still a VR title made by Fazbear Entertainment, but instead of being a game that publicly releases, it seems like this is only for new Fazbear Entertainment employees, and they play all the mini games to find out which branch of Fazbear Entertainment suits them best. Again, is it preparing food? Is it technical support? Which, to me at least, lends a lot of cadence to the theory that we're going to be playing as Cassie's father, because he was a very mysterious character that was barely touched upon in Ruin, though we do know he worked at Fazbear Entertainment in some capacity. So I'm curious if Help Wanted 2, that was his introduction to Fazbear Entertainment. We're playing as him, beta testing all the games, seeing, all right, where am I going to go in Fazbear Entertainment? I'm not entirely sure that's my working theory. I'd love to know your thoughts and theories on Help Wanted 2 and its deep, deep lore. That's going to do it for this FNAF News video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.